So I'd like to talk about a folded cascode amplifier, but a very particular folded cascode amplifier that is actually quite interesting structure. Now, if you're not familiar with a folded cascode amplifier, what you typically have is a typical differential pair sitting here. There's a bias current, and that current and the two differential pair goes are effectively cascoded by these two PFETs. And remember, cascodes are trying to basically make a voltage relatively constant. Um, or at least more constant based on where the source voltage is. So these PFETs are being a source, are basically being a folded form because normally you'd use NFETs to NFETs. Well, there's also some cascodes on the PFETs to match it to get a reasonable gain out of that structure. All of this makes sense. This looks like actually a very traditional form, two NFETs. These NFETs M1 and M2 are just are usually sitting there. Um, they're the core, core, core structure. Um, and then one of the big problems you run into is that there's usually some threshold voltage mismatch between those two devices. Okay. And then the rest of it is sort of sitting by two current sources that are biasing everything up here. Well, in this case, we actually make that be programmable. Those are the floating gate elements. Now, there's a current source that kind of sets it. So these are meant to kind of just change things slightly. These are not meant to be high, meant to be the primary biasing structures. It would also be the case that the current source um, would also influence exactly what the, the bias circuitry would be for these devices. Although, in theory, these could also be floating gate elements and maybe some similar advantages will be there. You might wonder why you have these MUX elements. These MUX elements are here to be very explicit to show what elements you might need to deal with for programming. So in this case, you have a switch between the actual signal path or actually having the drain voltages available for programming. Um, this particular type of topology is, is consistent with a, typical, um, with a typical direct programming type of configurability or configurations. And so that's typically what, what you would look at in this kind of case. And so you say, huh, I have two floating gate elements and maybe what I'm going to do here is by Tweaking currents, I might be able to get at one particular bias point over temperature. Maybe I can get something to work. And maybe I can help some improvement structures there. Maybe so. Let's look at that a little more closely. Um, what is interesting is that if you look at the size of this cell for a half micron CMOS process, this is a very uh, small cell. There's no terribly large elements, including the floating gate elements including all the capacitors and other structures in it. This is not meant to be a, a large structure. You could probably even have made it smaller, um, but it's pretty small for your typical amplifier in what would have been, you know, fairly routine process, you know, in the 90s. So the question is, okay, taking this particular structure and this particular process, could you get the offsets much, much smaller? And the question first, right off the bat, is, well, how is that going to happen? Is that some slight tweak of the currents here will kind of, everything will magically just kind of come together? And we'll just kind of have some currents to check? And, and a zeroth order might give you that. And particularly if you're used to thinking about very typical small signal models, you might think, okay, it might help a couple cases and it might work. What's going on is far more profound. And you can see this in the data that we're going to, to look at. In particular, it turns out something very interesting happens. You look at the floating gate voltage here or here. We'll start with this one. The floating gate voltage here actually has this particular gain from here to VA. And in fact, that gain is minus kappa. Uh, would, would look like something along the lines of minus kappa because I'm also going into the source node of this PFET. So from this perspective, it looks like sort of the inverting node of a source follower. So minus cap is about what you would expect. So this voltage can, can move this voltage up and down. This voltage moves this voltage up and down. There's a couple second order effects, but that's primarily the case. And you're thinking, that's great, but that doesn't do anything, right? Because how does that affect these? But if you think about it for a second, this voltage moving up and down, that actually changes the drain voltage, because that is that terminal. And that drain voltage, remember, there's a slight coupling into the surface potential, a slight put coupling into the surface potential at the source to channel space spot. 
And that's actually what determines how the transistor is functioning. Interestingly enough, it doesn't move it very much. This is often what we're looking for to get reasonable gain. Although maybe we wouldn't make these transistors be the longest of the bunch. But a small change is good because a typical offset might be 10, 20 millivolts. So changing this, you know, changing this voltage by some amount actually turns out to change that, to actually help us tweak the mismatch and change the mismatch. So by changing this voltage and this voltage by some amount, I can actually compensate for the threshold voltage mismatch here and here. And I'm not just sort of indirectly doing it, I'm actually very directly changing it. In fact, if you think about it, we talk about that term from drain voltage and the surface potential for all his, a whole bunch of historical reasons as the drain-induced barrier lowering. So the drain is actually changing the barrier, changing the threshold voltage. Ah, this is interesting. And it turns out that you can actually use this. Um, this is actually a whole way of changing, looking at the current difference I would have through here and here. So we did plot this in current difference. And it turns out I can show a whole range, a whole sort of nice linear response from that. Not surprising. And that gives me a sense of what my offset voltages are. And if I go really, really tight, I can actually get this, you know, we did this at 25 microvolts. Now, it could have gone further. Theoretically, it could have gone sub 100 nanovolts. But 25 microvolts was pretty remarkable. But what was, and, and of course, this was a fairly typical op-amp. You could look at all, a whole range of typical kinds of parameters that you would see from the structure. So I measured a couple of simulated, and we could look at a whole range of things that you might run into. Uh, of course, what was nice is that the voltage drip, which is a floating gate parameter, is really, really small. Now here's the thing. Imagine now I take this amplifier and I look at the voltage offset, which is one of the things we often care about, over 170 degrees C range from minus 40 to 140 C. And here's what's interesting. It only moved 130 microvolts. Now, and it's an interesting shape, and we can talk about the various details of it and what that might mean, but that's a remarkable amount of remarkable amount of constant behavior over that temperature range. The only way you get that is if you fundamentally are actually moving the physics in the structure. And you could argue that you probably could even get this even flatter if you were building floating gate elements into these spaces. So it clearly proves that this is the case. It turns out this is a very, very powerful approach. Um, very, very powerful approach. And one that um, really shows one of the interesting ways of using, float using floating gate elements where the floating gate elements actually never get even in the data path. They never have any impact on the data path for any practical purpose. And yet, they have a huge impact. And that turns out to have some great uh, implications. And so it becomes a really, really impressive structure using this floating gate, boulder, boulder cascade amplifier structure.